I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for, for joining us. Uh, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, I'm Warren Newmeyer. I'm the Territory Account Manager for Western Canada. And I wanted to introduce a lot of you um, who are on the call today. Some of you are very familiar with MBSI Wave, some not so much, but wanted to uh, make the introduction to MBSI Wave as well as do a little bit of a, a ruckus technical update for everybody. Um, MBSI Wave has been uh, one of our distributors since uh, the start of uh 2022, but uh, uh, really just within the last few months, we've really been able to kind of kick things kick started with them just because of uh, the product constraint issues. And as the stock slowly hit, kind of works its way into uh, into their channel and into their hands. So um, I, so we'll start off with uh, Cody Cochran from MBSI Wave, and uh, we will uh, uh, then move on to the technical update with Jose Pereira. Cody, I'll uh, let you introduce yourself and MBSI Wave to a few of the Ruckus folks, as well as uh, uh, some of the other MBSI Wave customers that have joined us today. Excellent. Thank you so much, Warren. And, uh, you know, we certainly appreciate uh, teaming up with uh, with you guys and and having this opportunity to introduce ourselves to uh, maybe uh, to some folks who might not be familiar with who MBSI Wave is, and even some that might be familiar or very familiar with us, maybe you might pick up a tidbit or two on you know some extra value add that we bring to the table that you might not be aware of. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep it quick. I know distribution, you know, obviously not the sexiest topic out there, but um, we we do have a unique spin on it, and we're just going to kind of um, you know go through a few things on that side. Uh, just some housekeeping uh, with this webinar session. So uh, this webinar will be recorded. Uh, it's going to be uploaded to uh, all of our social media outlets. Uh, you know, fairly shortly after we're done here today. Uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera, uh, you'll be able to find that post. Uh, you can also reach out to uh, to myself or any of the MBSI WAVE team or the uh, the Ruckus folks as well, and, and we'll be sure to uh, to direct you to recording uh, so you can either share it or, or go through it again. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the session, uh, please do drop them in the chat window um, as we're moving along. So we, we will be addressing them at the, at the very end of the webinar. Uh, so don't be concerned. We're, 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 not, uh, we're not ignoring your question or, or missing it if you're, uh, if you're dropping something in the middle. Uh, and if we do happen to run out of time, uh, we will make sure to personally reach out and, and uh, address any questions or, or anything that you, you might have or want some uh, further information on. Um, and then also, as a reminder, at the end of the webinar, we are going to be doing a skill testing question on, uh, on uh, a, uh, a topic covered by Jose uh, when, when we get to the technical updates, the ruckus technical updates. So uh, make sure you're paying attention. There's a $100 Amazon gift card in it for you if you can be the first to answer. All right. So I'm going uh, to kick it off here. So yeah, I'm Cody Cochran, business development executive here at MBSI Wave for Western Canada. I believe uh, uh, pretty much the, the entire majority of our audi audience is based out of Western Canada. So we're gonna be focusing uh, the sales team and everything uh, more West. However, uh, if, we, if we happen to have some, uh, some folks from Central or East, uh, we can absolutely get you in touch with our, with our Eastern uh, Canadian uh, sales team as well. So let's just uh, roll into this here. Uh, so, you know, our basic mission statement of MBSI Wave, you know, we want to be the premier value-added distributor of wireless and networking technology, and we provide it with dedication to the highest quality customer experience with the unrivaled service and support. This is, uh, you know, just you know, pretty cookie cutter uh, statement. We're going to go into uh, how we actually do this uh, as we move along here. So um, MBSI Wave was formerly known as MBSI Canada uh, a few years back. So just, um, just so everybody's aware, you know, we're not a brand new organization. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, deep seated history um, in the ISP space, the VAR space integration, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, you know, back all the way in 2003, uh, you know, um, deploying one of the very first Motorola Canopy uh, wireless internet service in Canada. 2004, MBSI Canada is founded. Uh, 2007, uh, Michael Snyder and Ryan Tabor take over the business as the, uh, as the sharing principles of the organization, both who are still active day to day. 
uh, with with customers and on the technical side, we'll get into that. Um, and uh, in 2015, MBSI Canada formed a partnership with Wave based out of the United States uh, to become MBSI Wave and uh, transforming from more of a, you know, an integrator value added reseller type model into a master distribution model. Uh, they, they had, you know, built up this uh, snowball, this great reputation in the industry and uh, they they started selling more, um, you know, of certain manufacturers' products than you know actual distributors were. So it was kind of a no-brainer to uh, to evolve the business. So now MBSI Wave is strictly uh, distribution. We don't do those. Uh, we don't do that integration work or, or anything like that. And then, as Warren had mentioned, uh, very beginning of the year in 2022, uh, MBSI Wave and Ruckus we form a distribution partnership. And as Warren had mentioned, you know we've been kind of slowly getting into it just because of you know we we know the logistical issues and 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 some delays there. So we're still waiting for, you know, a bulk of our inventory to come in. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're uh, pretty optimistic it's going to be early next year. Um, but, um, you know, that certainly if, if you're motivated and interested to work with us and do business with us, uh, you know, by all means, get in touch with us. We, we certainly want to make sure we have product on the shelf. And if you have projects coming up, uh, any kind of inventory needs that, you, that you're going to need on our shelf, please let us know. We, we want to get ahead of that and, and make sure that we can service you, uh, you know, especially rolling into uh, 2023. So let's take a look again. We're focusing Western Canada today. Uh, Eastern Canada, uh, pretty much exactly the same mirrored, um, you know, just, just a few different faces. But uh, we'll start with the sales team. So again, you have myself up there. I'm located in Saskatchewan. Uh, we have Brent Hickman, our strategic account manager based out of uh, the Vancouver area. Uh, and uh, Jamie is uh, sales support and he's based in Medicine Hat, Alberta. Um, looking over to the technical team and we're gonna touch on these uh, on these guys a little bit more and, and a lot of the value they bring. So we have Ryan Tabor. Again, he's one of the principals of the organization and in um, the lead systems engineer. And then we have Dave Cl uh, and Ryan is based out of Medicine Hat as well. And then we have uh, Mr. Dave Cleland, uh, systems engineer, trainer extraordinaire. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's a big part of the, the technical value that, that we bring forward to our customer base. Uh, he's based in Calgary. And then uh, just, you know, just some notes on the management and the marketing team. So there you see Michael Schneider, the other principal of the organization more on the day-to-day -day management of the uh, of the organization and you know involved in accounting and operations and kind of oversees things on that side uh, and then we have a uh, you know just a rock star of a marketing team uh you know nicole Devereaux and and leah uh nicole's out in ontario uh leah is in calgary as well um you know just absolute rock stars so the biggest thing to take away from this slide is there's a lot of eyeballs on every account and every opportunity and every deal. Um, so it's not just having one sales rep and if somebody's out sick or on vacation or whatnot and you have those challenges of potentially getting a hold of somebody. We have a team structure where there's always somebody who's going to be looking at, you know, any requests, any challenges, anything that comes up so we can service you as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, so we'll just keep moving on here. So just some of our complementary lines to the Ruckus portfolio. Um, you know, we do, we have other, uh, other products. You can go on our website and see our, uh, full line card, but these are the real, uh, complementary products. So everything from power, cabling, enclosures, fiber, antennas, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we, anything wireless and wireline, we got you covered. Um, so, you know, we can get you a line card in hand if you want to see or, you know, talk about any of these complementary products, but we try to bundle a solution together as opposed to just, you know, how give us the part number and, and that's exactly what we'll send you. So just moving along here. Uh, so let's talk about some of our customer types and in the verticals that, that we play in. Um, so managed service providers, this is probably, you know, the bulk of the folks that are on here on this call today, you know, in, in every vertical, you can see, you know, everything from education, healthcare, hospitality, schools, campus, industrial security. Um, you know, we, we've played in virtually every vertical, always lots of projects going on. They're all different. Uh, they all have different requirements. They all have different challenges. They all have different requests, barriers to entry, as, as you know. 
Um, so this is a, you know, and, and we know how to navigate that with our partners. Um, so, so what are some of the differences that MBSI Wave brings? Well, you know, that proper onboarding of hardware and software, if there's any challenges there, if you're newer to a platform, we can absolutely make sure that you're set up to be successful as opposed to just saying, oh, you got to talk to the manufacturer about that, or, you know, you got to go get your support elsewhere. Um, so again, we have that technical support, both on the pre and post sale, um, you know, assisting with manufacturer processes as well. You know, they're all a little bit different. They all have different um, uh, procedures and processes. Uh, so, you know, things like deal registrations and partner programs and DDOs, et cetera. So if, if you're having, you know, challenges, you know, kind of navigating any of those things, we're absolutely happy to help just make it as simple as possible. Uh, for you. So we also are, you know, we're fixed wireless sol uh, solutions experts. Uh, this is something that, you know, we'll touch on a little bit later, but um, we can, we can really help you expand those opportunities and projects that you might be running to as a trip, as a traditional MSP, maybe, maybe not wanting to go in that space because uh, we're, we're not sure, you know, we haven't really you know, dived into that space, but there are a lot of opportunities to expanding that broadband capacity and then, you know, doing the Wi-Fi uh, along with it. Um, and then again, that technical design assistance, we're more than happy to, uh, you know, to take a call where it's, hey, here's the idea, here's what we're, here's what we're trying to accomplish. And we're, we're happy to be there every step of the way on the, you know, the planning, the design, you know, overcoming all the hurdles that that we might run into and and that's how we really like to work with our with our partner community is you know being involved as early as you're comfortable with us being involved in and and just helping you know take some of that workload off off your organization and just working together lockstep on on projects and, and being successful together uh so another type uh you know we we kind of some, you know, some MSPs kind of do a little bit of everything and, and uh, some are just more on that value added reseller integrator, you know, they have a ton of different names and acronyms, but, um, you know, we're doing everything, uh, lots of industrial uh, applications, uh, you know, oil and gas, you know, we're, we're focused on Western Canada, we know oil and gas is really starting to bubble up and there's a lot more opportunities there, utilities, transportation, uh, you know, that enterprise connectivity, we kind of touched on that already, uh, lots of uh, government as well, government projects, so everything from smart cities to rural connectivity and everything in between, you know, we, we've been involved in projects and major major cities uh, throughout the country. And then we've done projects with very rural municipalities as well. Uh, you know, very rural, small communities and, and everything in between. And uh, federal defense, that's another area that, that we have, um, that, that we've worked together with, with partners on, you know, um, RCMP and, and things like that. So Department of Defense. So we've, we, we're pretty versed in, in where we play uh, with our partner base. And, and we, we see a lot of our partners, they're very strong in certain areas. And that's, that's what we like to work on together. Um, so will the MBSI wave difference. So again, you know, that longer term partner, um, that long term partnership, we, we don't want to be one and done on on projects and deals, we want to be, you know, partnered up for the long run, you know, the opportunity assistance on public bids. Um, you know, RFPs, RFIs, RFQs, we, we can help with proposals, designs, pre and post sale, de uh, uh, pre and post sale de and deployment, um, you know, and again, we, we really tout ourselves as having that best technical support in the business. And then, you know, just some of the other stuff that, that we kind of covered already. And uh, last but not least, uh, we won't spend a lot of time here. This is kind of a different, um, you know, kind of a vertical on its own, uh, the service provider business. So ISPs, those wireless, wireline, or the hybrid uh, folks that do both. Um, we, we've done a lot in this space over the years. Uh, we're very involved with, um, you know, the associations uh, in supporting those initiatives and, you um, you know, so this is really where that fixed wireless expertise is coming in and really shining is because of all this, uh, all the work we've done with service providers. Um, so we'll just, we'll just move on here. So now let's talk about, so Ruckus and MBSI Wave, we're, we're going to talk about some extra value that, that we can bring to you uh, as a Ruckus partner specifically. Um, so again, we, uh, we, we do have that largest stocking position of wireless equipment in Canada. Again, our Ruckus hasn't 
started flowing in as you know where we'd like it to be, but it's coming. Um, and, and we want to be ready and prepared. So again, we're really encouraging folks if you uh, if if you're having uh, needs requirements for next year, if things are starting to come up and, and you are motivated, interested in, in potentially working with us, let us know. Um, we're, we're more than happy to, to, you know, ramp up our inventory and make sure that, that we're going to have the products for you when, when projects start taking off. Uh, you know, we can do staging and configuration and, and uh, pre-installation, you know, hardware kitting. Uh, we can help with all of those. You know, we can do the just in time. We can do complete blind shipments as well. Um, so if you, you know, you don't want our name on, on the paperwork when it hits, you know, wherever it's going, absolutely no problem doing that. Again, that pre post sale support. Um, and really the, the, one of the biggest feathers in our cap is that unrivaled customer service and responsiveness. When you're dealing with distribution, per, the purchasing process is supposed to be the easy part. And it just, it blows my mind how, how often we, we get that feedback uh, with, with folks, you know, dealing with, you know, whomever it is uh, with whatever product it is. Uh, where they're frustrated because they're not getting quick responses. They're not getting, you know, they're, the, the purchasing process is not being simplified for them. And really, again, like I said, that's supposed to be the easiest part. That's where, you know, Brent and, and Jamie really just shine. They, once we get a customer working with us, rarely will they stray away just because, you know, they're getting answers within minutes. It's uh, they're I can't say enough good things about uh, the work they do. And also, uh, you know, that's replicated out east as well. Just a rock star team out there um, uh, doing this, uh, taking care of the customers on the day to day as well. Uh, so just some more support, and I know I'm uh, kind of beating this uh, beating this drum a lot, but uh, uh, we really, really like to educate our customers. We really like to be involved on the technical side. Uh, we went on the configuration and staging and kidding. We've talked that already. Network planning. Again, we can make recommendation on the technology you want to deploy, frequencies, um, architecture, um, etc. You know, and detailed, accurate, and professional designs. So we've we have partners who just try trust us. They, they come to us with, hey, here's what we want to do. And they will just follow Dave and Ryan's lead on, you know, what they recommend. And, you know, they continue to come back. So we know that the, the projects are being deployed successfully. Uh, we do licensing applications. That's more on the microwave side. Uh, so if you do any licensed microwave, we can turnkey that for you. No problem with the uh, ISED. Uh, technical training. Now, this is, this is Mr. Dave Clollins. You know, this is where he really shines. He's got a lot of passion and uh, we're, we want to get more involved with Ruckus um, on the technical training side as we kind of move our relationship forward. But, um, you know, we can, it can be private. It can be, you know, open sessions. We do, we're running those all the time. We can customize, uh, you know, what, what your organization needs, what, what you need to learn, what you need your staff to learn. We can do cert, non-cert. Um, you know, we, we have the pre-scheduled class styles, virtual and in-person, very flexible on that side. And really that's Dave Collins' biggest passion. So when he gets to do training, he's, uh, he's always just gung ho and he's amazing at it. And it's fantastic. Um, that knowledge base, years of technical experience, not just on the engineering side, but even our sales teams. Uh, there's a lot of years of experience in, in the industry, uh, you know, up and down the, uh, the roster of, uh, of our sales organization. And then options, you know, uh, pricing incentives, what, you know, how can we, you know, how can we uh, help you be successful, get over any financial hurdles? You know, we just, we just try to be easy to work with and, and flexible for our customer base. Um, so again, that, that training piece, we've kind of talked to that already. Uh, tech talk is something I want to talk about a little bit more. So again, this is, uh, this is quarterbacked by Dave Cleland. Uh, these sessions are extremely technical. So these are not for somebody like me. I, I can sit on for about five minutes and then I'm gone. I'm lost. Um, these are extremely technical uh, topics Dave goes through. Uh, all the sessions are recorded. Uh, they are on our YouTube channel. 
if you yourself are extremely technical or you have, you know, extremely technical folks on your staff, really recommend you just point them to that channel or, or uh, direct yourself to it and just check out some of the topics there. Um, you know, really, really technical, great informative sessions. And we're always all ears. If you have an idea or there's a topic that you would like to see us dive into, absolutely let us know. We're more than happy to, uh, to, to at least review and, and um, whether we do an actual tech talk or, you know, maybe it's a one-on-one, -on -one, just, you know, that education piece, extremely valuable. Uh, we, we also do some boot camps. Uh, we're kind of uh, we're really ramping up in that space um, when we're looking at our, um, we've, we've built a studio uh, in Medicine Hat. We're planning to utilize that, um, you know, quite a bit more for doing these online sessions, these boot camps, these trainings. Uh, again, just really just feeding that knowledge uh, to our customer base and just, again, it's stacking that, that extra value add. Um, so just some uh, just some extras. This is more, you know, on the logistical side, the day to day, uh, some of this, but reporting, um, you know, if you want to know what we have on the shelf, we can do inventory reporting, it could be daily, weekly, monthly, you know, we can have those uh, automatically facilitated, you know, back order reporting, uh, we can give you, um, we can give you a list of everything that, you know, is on order and when it's expected to come in. And, you know, because dates, especially these days are bouncing all over the place and things are getting pulled in and pushed out and, you know, kind of all over the place. And it can be extremely challenging to track. Uh, so we've, we've uh, implemented, you know, this back order reporting where we give a customer, Hey, here's everything you have on order with us, back order with us right now, uh, you know, and here's the date. So you can properly plan and, you know, inform your customers if there's, you know, if there's a delay or maybe you're going to get something quicker, you know, at, um, we, we can do that for you. Um, you know, quoting follow-ups, we do this just as standard practice where, you know, we just do it as a, you know, kind of a cookie cutter thing. Uh, you know, every day um, we're, we're reviewing, you know, what was quoted last week and just following up. Uh, there's a lot of times where we've had customers say, oh crap, I thought I ordered that. And, uh, you know, it's like, no, you didn't, but, you know, do you want to? So just kind of saving those small, you know, issues that can really snowball into bigger ones. Uh, our new website just launched this week. Uh, do check it out. We have full e-commerce capability, inventory levels, accounts payable information. It's fantastic. I know Nicole and Leah, you know, they've kind of ran this marathon of, of getting things up and running. And yeah, it's fantastic. We're super excited about it. Uh, we also have a lab, um, a live lab with, you know, uh, multiple vendor solutions in there, live and functioning um, in, in Dave Clollin's basement. So we really want to, uh, we really need to tip our hat to Mrs. Clon for letting, uh, letting this wireless product kind of overtake his basement. Um, but uh, it's growing all the time. So if you're, you know, there's a product solution you want to look at, you really, you want to see it up and running, you want to see the config you want, you know, to whatever it is, uh, we can do that. Uh, you know, shows and events, um, you know, we, we like to participate in trade shows, road shows, lunch and learns, et cetera. So we're always happy and motivated to help our partners there. Uh, simple and efficient ordering processes, you know, same day quoting, uh, you know, usually minutes after we receive the DDO, you're going to get your quote, um, not waiting, you know, days or, you know, whatever it is. And again, those multiple contacts for quick response time. So if somebody happens to be tied up or they're out of office or whatever it is, um, you're going to get a response time that's, you know, snappy. Uh, and that fixed wireless expertise, I kind of I hit on that already. So we'll just, I'll wrap up here. Um, so again, get in touch with us. Um, you know, we're, we're absolutely motivated. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a generic uh, email for, that hits our entire Western Canadian sales organization, uh, saleswest at mbsiwave.com. We recommend that, that folks are going there for when they need information. Um, you know, our technical support, support at mbsiwave.com uh, and marketing, you know, marketing at mbsiwave.com and uh, accounting, shipping, logistics, is all there and uh, all of our social media information is here as well um, so yeah absolutely if you're not familiar with us you know we we certainly would you know love to at least have a conversation and, and see if we can add some extra value to you and and uh, yeah hopefully form a form a partnership down the road so 
I apologize. I probably went a little longer than I <laughs> than I wanted to. Uh, but uh, so so thanks for sticking it out. And uh, now we're gonna. Uh, I think we're gonna transition over to uh, to Jose uh, to do the the technical updates, and then I'll be uh, I'll be jumping back on at the uh, after Jose's done, and we'll do our Q and A and our skill testing questions. So. Uh, uh, Nicole, can you uh, can you pass over the control to Jose? Thanks very much, Cody. Appreciate the uh, update and uh, uh, filling us in on some of the the added features there for uh, for MBSI Wave. I know uh, a lot of the Ruckus partners can take advantage of uh, those services. And also the quick turnaround on uh, the DDOs is something that uh, all partners uh, would uh, would definitely appreciate as well. So um, I'll, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Jose Pereira. For most of you, I think you know him. Uh, he is my systems engineer based out of Vancouver. And he's gonna give us a little uh, Ruckus update as to where we are with Wi-Fi 6E and uh, beyond. Jose? Yeah, thank you, Warren. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, and um, what about the slide? Are we sharing the, the slide? You certainly are, yep. Okay, perfect. So, so thank you, Warren, and thank you, Corey. Um, I'm going to be, uh, during the next uh, 30, 35 minutes, I'm going to be talking about Wi-Fi 6 and an update on, on what is happening with the Wi-Fi 6E, uh, the Rokus R760, an introduction to Wi-Fi 7 and other consideration for the implementation of Wi-Fi 6E. Um, let's get into the Wi-Fi 6E update. So um, when we look at, the, at what has been happening on the Wi-Fi world, um, we see before uh, Wi-Fi 6, everything was about um, aggregating uh, throughput, adding uh, speed. Um, obviously, that uh, uh, growth uh, on devices was driven that uh, that uh, technology, the technology to you know um, work on the 2.4 and 5 and aggregate throughput. But when we look at, at what is coming and what is next. Uh, with the IoT or 20 more billion devices, uh, the focus on Wi-Fi 6 and, and the newest technology is changing to uh, be a more uh, focus on network efficiency and capacity. So we will see um, during the presentation some of those uh, features that uh, are addressing these um, requirements, new requirements. Um, so let's get into the Wi-Fi 6 E, where we are, um, this uh, slide is the uh, latest from Wi-Fi Alliance. Uh, we can see the adoption of the six gigahertz spectrum. Um, in North America, um, US and Canada, we have adopted the full spectrum, but still uh, some countries are deciding uh, about it. Uh, some have decided to adopt just part of that spectrum. So it's not going to be the same uh, everywhere. So access points and the technology will have to uh, adopt to that. And something that we will talk that is uh, very important, the AFC, Automated Frequency uh, Coordination. Um, it, it will, you know, it's just important piece for all these uh, different um, um, decisions about the, the channels and, and what the spectrum they are going to be using. Um, when we look at um, more in, in North America, um, Canada, um, the ISED, uh, decided to open the full 1200 megahertz spectrum on May 2021. Um, I have uh, the link on the uh, slide uh, where you can see the decision around uh, the idea with the 1200, adding the six gigahertz spectrum is that we are going to have, uh, uh, we are going, well, we have it here on the screen, we have 59 uh, new 20 megahertz channels up to seven uh, new 160 megahertz. So we are talking about a, a total new spectrum that it will provide, um, um, you know, more um, bandwidth and um, new greenfield environment for Wi-Fi. So um, we um, 
we will be able to, even with a Wi-Fi 7, uh, make use of all these uh, new spectrum. Uh, looking at um, Wi-Fi 6, um, I, want, I wanted to mention these uh, major enhancements because uh, Wi-Fi 6E is based on, on this. So uh, starting with uh, Wi-Fi 6, um, there were a few uh, major features that were introduced in order to uh, improve the data rates. Uh, so we have uh, now uh, 1024 QAM uh, uh, with a 25% higher data rate, a uh, long OFDM symbol that it will also help with that throughput. Um, we uh, had, we have uh, OF, OFDMA a uh, modulation, which is uh, something new. Uh, before uh, we were using OSDM, now uh, with the Wi-Fi 6, that um, the new modulation is, uh, is dividing that spectrum in a different way and making use of, uh, of the spectrum in a more efficient way. Um, we also, uh, which is not something new, multi-user MIMO, um, but uh, with the uh, Wi-Fi 6, um, now we support uh, both uh, downlink and uplink, and that is also providing some th throughput gains. Uh, some uh, new protocol for a uh, uh, battery, uh, for uh, but improve the battery life, uh, the TWT, and something uh, known as BSS color, uh, which is not more than a way to differentiate the communication from different access points when they are on the same channel. So now uh, access points uh, and devices uh, will will know if that packet is was meant to them, even uh, you know if that uh, information um, you know is have interference in the environment from other access points of the same channel. So there is a. Uh, new field in the in the in the packets where uh, they can see uh, you know if that uh, information was sent to the device or access point. Uh, so all these uh, all these uh, new improvement um, you know uh, has been around with the uh, Wi-Fi six. Uh, um, what is new with the Wi-Fi six E um, is about that new six gigahertz spectrum that we talked before. So um, now we have a more adjacent spectrum, uh, 1200 megahertz. Uh, we, are a, we will be able, given you know, the number of channels that we have to, ha to use wider channels, something that uh, in 2.4 and 5 mega, uh, gigahertz, uh, we were somehow restricted because of the number of channels that we had before, but with uh, Wi-Fi 6E, we will be able to have a wider channels, um, less interference because um, uh, in the six gigahertz, um, it will be a new full spectrum. So that uh, will provide some benefits. Um, so far will be related to gigabit speeds, uh, low latency and higher capacity. Uh, when we talk about uh, the six gigahertz spectrum, um, the IEEE decided that uh, there would be different device classes. Um, there will be a standard power devices, low power indoor devices, and very low power indoor devices. So there are some rules. Um, and, and the reason for this is because on the six, six uh, gigabit uh, spectrum, uh, gigahertz spectrum, um, we have uh, other systems already in place, point-to-point uh, -point links uh, used for backhauling public services, satellite services, TV broadcasting. So they, uh, they needed to find a way how to you know, coordinate and keep all the systems working on the same spectrum. Um, the standard power devices, as uh, we see on the screen, it, it, could, uh, it can be used for indoor and outdoor. Um, there is some restriction on the angle, uh, the pointing angle of the access point. That's more for a point-to-point, point, point to multi point systems. Um, there, there will be the need to have an automated frequency coordination. Um, there is, I have one slide about that. Uh, so uh, as a way to control, you know, when we have a Wi-Fi 6E device 
close to a one of the incumbent or these other systems working on the six gigahertz. Uh, in Canada, um, we approve to operate the standard power on Uni5, Uni6, and Uni7. So we will be getting a full 950 megahertz for the standard power device. This is something different to the, to the US. In the US, um, as you may see on the screen, they only approve Uni5 and Uni7. But in our case, we will have the, the full spectrum. Um, for low power devices, um, they will, they can only operate indoors. Um, they can operate across the full 1200 uh, megahertz of a spectrum, all the bands. Um, they have some limitations, uh, like at this access point, they need to have integrated antennas. They cannot be on weatherized enclosure and it, they cannot operate on battery power. So it's a way to be sure that that access point will be inside, uh, indoor, and will comply with the power uh, requirements. Um, very low power devices will be more uh, like a, for mobile applications, wearable, um, some other devices that um, they, they won't require any FSC uh, and they will be limited to 14 uh, dBm or um, something new that we will talk about on the next slide that is the power spectral density or PST. So uh, something that is uh, also changing is the concept of uh, power spectral density. Uh, before on the 2.4 and 5, uh, we used to talk about EIRP as a constant to represent the, the power of the, the output of the total system. Um, you may know that every time that we bond channels, uh, we we lose uh, 3 dB due to the noise floor. So what we have on this uh, uh, table is basically uh, what the power spectral density wants to accomplish. That is to keep the SNR or the effective uh, EIRP uh, constant uh, when we are bonding channels. Now on the six gigahertz, uh, spectrum, we will be able to bond 80 or 160. Um, with the Wi-Fi 7, we will be able to bond uh, three, uh, 320. So uh, this is a way to, you know, uh, in, uh, there is some limitation. The PSD uh, is dictating some uh, limitation of how that power can be increased, but, uh, uh, and it's expressed in dB uh, per megahertz. But basically, the idea is that uh, we'll compensate those 3, B, uh, 3 dBm uh, lost by the noise floor. So in, 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 in the end, as you may see here, uh, the total effect is output will be constant even when we are bonding uh, channels. These are some of the technical conditions for, for the indoor and outdoor access point. Uh, there will be some limitation on the total uh, power of, uh, on the system, EIRP, as you may see on the screen. Uh, I mentioned already that the standard power, uh, we will be able to um, work from Uni5 to Uni7, so 950 megahertz, US a little bit different. Uh, but there will be some limitation on the power and um, very important um, but is restricting standard power is the AFC um, the, the, uh, that is not uh, still uh, you know in place so they will in order to use this standard power we will need uh, this system uh, so far what we are able to use is the low power input and these are the limitation to a maximum of 30 for um, the access point and a maximum of 24 for the clients. So the, um, the auto automated frequency coordination, coordination um, there are different uh, proposed proposes, uh, you know, uh, proposal on, on how this, uh, uh, should be done. Uh, there is an open group. Uh, the link is on the, the slide, and there are, you know, different companies uh, proposing how this uh, should be done. It hasn't been approved uh, still uh, under discussion. Um, the, we are estimating that probably the, the first quarter or probably first half of uh, 2023 
uh, there will be something approved for the AFC. Uh, there are some companies already doing some testing, but um, still uh, in the early stages so here in Canada, uh, there has been some uh, discussion about if this AFC, AFC should be free, it should be uh, fee, uh, different services. Um, there are some companies uh, talking about uh, using a AFC, uh, different AFC for the rural areas, and then uh, different AFC for different parts of Canada. There are other companies uh, uh, saying that they should be a federal level for all the provinces, but still no decision. Uh, Canada uh, uh, IESD is uh, waiting for the approval uh, in order to make any decision. So we are still waiting. Uh, so that's uh, uh, limiting what uh, we can use with the existing Wi-Fi 60 access point. The way how it's supposed to work is, uh, or is, will, is going to be working, is that any access point uh, on the six uh, gigahertz spectrum will have to communicate to the AFC system um, it will send some information about uh, location, uh, channel power, and the AFC system will check in the database uh, what other incumbent or other systems are around in the proximity of the access point. Uh, it will do some calculation, estimating, you know, if that access point should be allowed or not. Uh, and if that access point is allowed, uh, it will be able to dictate what is the maximum power that uh, it should be broadcasting. The idea is to minimize that interference with existing systems. So the R760 um, access point is uh, the latest uh, announcement. Uh, it was announced uh, mid-2022, uh, uh, as we see on the screen, is uh, considered a high-end access point just for indoor. The access point, um, let me go to this uh, first. Uh, this uh, uh, access point uh, is a three band access point. So there are three radios, uh, one for 2.4, 5, and 6. Um, the access point uh, can work uh, on low power indoor and standard power. But as I mentioned before, we are not allowed to use a standard power yet. So it's uh, limited to LPI. Um, the other um, uh, benefits or features that the access point will include is uh, uh, multi-user MIMO, uh, OFDMA, beam flex. So uh, remember all our access point, they have the beam flex adaptive, adaptive antenna. So um, this access point, the R760, uh, we uh, have uh, the beam flex antenna uh, as well. Uh, you know that this is uh, uh, one of our differentiators. Um, so the beam flex, uh, you will see that in our, uh, our Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 access point down the road. Um, the, another um, consideration is the IoT radios. Uh, we have uh, BLT or CP. So it's only one radio. We can select uh, which one uh, we want to use for IoT connections. Um, another uh, important uh, um, uh, or difference with the previous access point is the multi gigabit port. So this access point, given the, all the new spectrum and the throughput that we can get, um, it has a 10 gig uh, based uh, Ethernet port. Um, and there are some considerations about power, and we will talk about that in the next slide. Uh, so uh, about control and management, uh, we have uh, a smart zone already supporting um, this access point, and uh, toward the end of the year, we will be announcing Roku's uh, cloud. Uh, it's important to consider that uh, this access point, um, even if you don't want to use the six gigahertz, uh, we can use the access point in two different modes. One where that third radio could be another five gigahertz radio or a six gigahertz radio. So that is something that we can configure on, on the software, but we have two different radio modes. Um, before I get to the to the power uh, settings, um, this is something important that I wanted to mention because you will see this uh, 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 in our uh, you know 
next uh, announcements and is about the Converge Wireless Access Platform. As you uh, see on the screen, when we started with uh, some flex access point, they only had um, capability of uh, uh, servicing Wi-Fi clients uh, connected to the controller, and, and that was the, the main objective. Uh, then when, when we announced Wi-Fi 5 and the possibility of having uh, IoT devices connected to the, those uh, access points, we call uh, those access points converge wireless access point because now we had the, the option to connect IoT devices. And what is uh, coming and you will see on the screen is that now we will be able to have uh, Wi-Fi, Wi IoT um, applications on, on the access point. Um, there will be uh, more information coming about that, but I just wanted to give you the he heads up about this Converge Wireless Access Platform. Um, when we talk about the power modes, something important to uh, mention here is that the 760, the R760 will require at least a AO2.3 AD or POE Plus um, to work, uh, you know, to start uh, broadcasting and enabling the radios. So if we connect that access point on a standard POE, it won't work. So we need to be uh, at least POE Plus, uh, uh, but you see that the radios won't have the capability of broadcasting at maximum power. So some limitations depending on the uh, radio mode. Uh, when we go to PO, uh, POE++ plus plus or BT or POH, uh, we will be basically on full functionality. Uh, we will consume around 33.8 watts. Um, it will have both Ethernet um, ports enabled. And if we want to have the USB uh, uh, available for some uh, application, then we need the DC power. Uh, this is a screenshot of a uh, smartphone 6.1, which is already is ready for six gigahertz. As I mentioned before, um, uh, we can only operate on low power mode. Uh, we have that option. Um, then we have the option to enable or disable the dual 5G mode. So if that uh, option is off, you will see here on the smartphone 2.4, 5, and 6. And if you uh, enable the dual 5G mode, uh, you will see that instead of having the 6 giga gigahertz, uh, you will have a lower 5G and an upper 5G. So uh, this is uh, how um, the configuration will be with the R760. Um, about management options, uh, we have uh, so far um, a smartphone 6.1, which is available, and um, we could be doing implementation with the R760 and smartphone 6.1. Uh, Rokus Cloud uh, will be released on Q4 um, this year. That's what we are estimating. And on Leash, there, we don't have any plan to support uh, 6E yet. Um, getting into uh, the introduction of Wi-Fi 7, uh, AO 2.11 BE, um, we, we can, uh, basically the uh, Wi-Fi 7 um, is, is very ambitious and, and there are a lot of enhancements uh, either on the Mac layer or the physical layer. So there are uh, different groups uh, working and proposing different features. So if you have, if you have seen some of the documentation, uh, there is a huge list of uh, some of the features to propose to the Wi-Fi 7. Uh, I will mention some of the most important ones. Uh, something to consider is that uh, we are at this um, moment uh, using the draft 1.2, which uh, was released in September 2021. And it's expected that Wi-Fi 7 will be, uh, you know, have the final amendment uh, on around May 2024. Um, even when we have the draft uh, 1.2, um, you will see that there are some uh, companies like Qualcomm, Broadcom, they, are, they already have some prototypes uh, working on Wi-Fi 7. They are doing some testing uh, with the Wi-Fi 7 uh, um, chipset, um, an Intel uh, chipset. So um, it, it's coming. 
So uh, 2023 uh, will be a year where we will see some announcement about Wi-Fi 7, some uh, devices uh, coming uh, into the market. Uh, and we expect that this is going to be more um, home oriented, so for home, uh, the residential market. But uh, when we look at the Wi-Fi 7 innovations, um, the idea is to, um, in, in addition to improving the, the throughput, which is going to be happening uh, thanks to the new spectrum, um, um, this is the, like a, the, the first time that I see that uh, the standard is addressing real-time applications. So uh, the idea of having um, that kind of efficiency, uh, it will allow us to have, uh, you know, 8K video, uh, virtual reality, uh, real-time gaming and other applications that it will require this kind of, uh, um, you know, connectivity. Uh, there will be some enhancements uh, on the OFDMA um, modulation. Um, something new that is the name, technical name is multi-link operation, but we, we will talk about that in, in the next few minutes. So when we look at the physical enhancement, um, the idea is that with this, uh, 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 Wi-Fi 7 um, a standard, we will be able to increase by 4.8 that uh, speed. And you see on the screen what is the expected uh, maximum speed with one special stream, and two special streams. So we are going from 1.2 to 2.9, 2.5 to 5.8. As I mentioned before, some of these testing that uh, I think Qualcomm has been doing so far, uh, they are reaching around five uh, gigabit per second uh, speed. So it's uh, really exciting uh, uh, to know that, that that is happening and the reason uh, why it's happening uh, is on this slide. Um, basically, uh, we are doubling the bandwidth uh, when we go from uh, 160 uh, to uh, 320, we are increasing uh, the channel size. When we go from eight special stream to 16, that now is the maximum on the Wi-Fi 7. And then uh, on the modulation side, uh, we are going from 1,024 to 4,096. So all this improvement on the physical layer, it will allow us to go to the, to get that 4.8 uh, increase. Uh, something that is uh, uh, changing as well, how the OSDMA works, and this is, uh, I don't want to get into the technical details, but uh, really quickly on this, uh, the changes are based on the how those uh, resource uh, units are uh, allocated. So something that changed from the uh, Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 is that that spectrum has been um, uh, divided uh, like in a small resort units and there are different sizes. Uh, it's more complex than that, but the idea just to give you the idea is uh, think about the resort unit like a piece of that spectrum. And then uh, when we look at uh, non Wi-Fi 6 devices, uh, we weren't able to split the channel bandwidth uh, for different users. So uh, we, were, we had to transmit even a small packets in the entire channel bandwidth or channel size. So 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz, we needed to use that uh, full uh, channel bandwidth for transmitting. So you see here in this uh, slide that every transmission is for one user different. So in Wi-Fi 6, uh, we were allowed to uh, use these resort units and transmit uh, packets to different users on the same channel. Uh, but there were some, um, issues with the assignments, how these are used, were assigned, um, you know, with the result in channel waste. So, uh, and also somehow affecting the, the, the network throughput. So on the new multi RU allocation, uh, they want to uh, eliminate those restrictions and trying to be more flexible how uh, those uh, RU will be assigned, especially when we talk about single adjacent RU um, for the, for, for the uh, spectrum of the channel. Um, the point short transmission uh, is basically, um, if we look at, at, at the 
figures here uh, before uh, when we had um, channel bonding and there were some interference or some uh, or the channel was uh, busy, uh, we weren't able to use it. It was a lot. When we go to the 11 AX um, and there was some interference as shown in the, in the, in the drawing, we were able to, to use part of that spectrum, like uh, if we were talking about 80, and this is the, the interference on the this uh, secondary 20 megahertz channel, then we could use part of that. But with the new Wi-Fi 7, we were able to use uh, all the remaining of that spectrum. So we are, uh, uh, in this example, making use of uh, 40 uh, megahertz channel and 20 more. So improving the, the how uh, deficiency, which is uh, something that I mentioned at the beginning, how um, the Wi-Fi 7 is looking to improve in, uh, in that area. Uh, on the Mac size, uh, Mac layer, uh, some of uh, uh, the enhancement is the multi-link operation. And this is uh, considered to be one of the huge innovation uh, of, uh, with the Wi-Fi 7. And some companies are saying that this is the true benefit of the Wi-Fi 7, because remember that slide uh, with the world uh, map where not every country is allowing the 1200 uh, or authorizing the 1200 uh, full spectrum. So some companies are saying that the multi-link operation will be part of that solution because the idea is that one device connecting to uh, the access point, um, they will be able to uh, connect with two different links. Uh, one could be on the six gigahertz, for example, the other one could be on the five gigahertz. And if on the five gigahertz, we have 80 megahertz channel, or on the five gig uh, six gigahertz, we have another 80, then we could have a connection that is going to be 160. So that's uh, what is uh, expecting to happen, uh, that now we can have uh, um, uh, more than one link opening the door, you know, to having uh, to have a, a better uh, uh, reduced latency, um, redundancy, or even uh, selecting what link is the best for that connection. Uh, another uh, feature is the direct link transmission, and that the idea is that. Um, I'm going to use this uh, as an example because uh, looking at the use cases, it, it make it probably easier to understand. So sometimes we have a, a VR system connected to the access point and it needs to connect to another console and that communication between VR and the console or between the camera with the printer, everything has to go through the access point. So Wi-Fi 7 is looking to um, improve that um, if the, those two devices are, uh, for example, in the same room, they are in, in proximity, why that data have to go through the access point? So they are talking about doing a direct connection between that VR system to the console or the camera to the printer without going through the, through the access point. So that's basically the concept behind this uh, direct link transmission. So um, considerations. So when we talk about uh, implementing um, uh, Wi-Fi 6E, uh, now knowing that uh, we need more power, uh, we need uh, multi gigabit. So obviously we have been talking about this since Wi-Fi 6, but I think uh, uh, for any uh, Wi-Fi 6E implementation, we will need to have these two. Uh, 6 e uh, multi gigabit switches um, with a PoE++ plus plus, uh, power. Uh, in, ad in addition to that, uh, please uh, remember about the WPA3. Um, there is no backward compatibility on this. Uh, it is mandatory uh, to use the uh, six gigahertz spectrum. So devices that are going to be using the six gigahertz spectrum, the Wi-Fi Alliance now mandates that uh, we need to use management frame protection and we need to use WPA3. Um, and that's uh, something that uh, we see um, in the Wi-Fi 6C uh, adoption. Uh, some devices are driven more for the home market. Uh, there is a list of all the devices that has been, you know, uh, certified uh, by the Wi-Fi Alliance on this uh, link. So you can see that, um, you know, we are still on that process. Um, iPhone 14 is not uh, Wi-Fi 6E, uh, for example, uh, but um, 
this is uh, something that will be changing in the next uh, uh, few months. Uh, we will see more and more. So um, with all this information, uh, so, uh, some considerations are uh, 5G and 6G are not the same. So we need to consider that uh, if we want to install uh, the R760 and we will be using the 6 gigahertz, they are not the same. Uh, we may require a new survey. There is a 2 dB difference uh, as far as uh, we have been testing. So consider that uh, in new projects, I think uh, we are ready to deploy uh, 6 gigahertz in Canada. Uh, but this consideration will help us to, you know, uh, um, uh, re uh, check those requirements from the customer and, and make the project a, a successful one. Um, another consideration is ROC AP. So some sensors in the market, they don't have uh, visibility into the six gigahertz spectrum. So it can be seen as a ROC AP. Uh, remember about WPA3, uh, we cannot use DPSK yet. So a DPSK uh, will be broken, or we, we cannot be used on on, on uh, six uh, six E. Uh, have to be WPA three. Um, even when uh, we have more channels, uh, finally we don't need DFS. <laughs> so AFS is not ready. So that that is a slowing down the the implementation as well. Uh, we need to be using uh, low power. Um, that means that specifically for outdoor deployments, we cannot use uh, outdoor access point yet on the six uh, gigahertz. So thank you uh, for your time. Um, I will open it now for questions. All right, thanks Jose. Um, great information there, uh, very informative. I don't think we have any pending questions. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that chat window um, there if anybody has anything last minute. Uh, but I guess what we will do is we'll go into our skill testing question here. So I'll just give everybody just a couple of seconds to get their chat windows open. Uh, that's where you will type in the answer. So I'll just give a few seconds there. Everybody's ready. All right. Now, what is the patented technology in the APs that gives Ruckus the competitive edge against competitors? There we got our uh, we got our answer. We got we had a couple of real quick uh, real quick answers. Um, uh, Michael, you were uh, you were first, so we will uh, will be in touch to uh, to get you your Amazon gift card. Uh, again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, we hope you got something out of the session. Uh, I certainly did uh, from the Ruckus technical updates. Uh, thank you, Warren. Thank you, Jose, for taking part in this. Um, again, MBSI Wave, we're always running webinars and sessions. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll certainly keep our customer base uh, updated on that. And uh, we, um, <clears throat> uh, we, we hope you have a great day and we'll, uh, we'll hopefully talk soon. So thank you all very much for joining. Yes, thanks very much, uh, Cody and uh, Jose, and uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, your time to everybody that uh, made the time to to join us. And Mitch, we'll uh, we'll get that uh, gift card out to you. And Sean, very close to uh, to getting in on the uh, on the uh, on the answer there. So um, we <laughs> will uh, ch thank everybody for joining us and. Uh, uh, we will talk to you again soon. Thanks. And I, I apologize. That, yeah, it is. It is Mitch. I was. Uh, I was reading. <laughs> That's my. Call. I apologize for that. Kind of butchered that one. <laughs> All good, Cody. All good. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.